The BNLC, or Beaumont and Lake Charles Railroad, is a fictional railroad that runs between Horse Leaf, Louisiana and Svelterville, Louisiana. Reminder that these are fictional towns. Do not search them up on Google, you're not going to get anything. But anyway, this railroad is shared, this line is shared by 18 railroads, 8 of which ex actually exist in real life, and 10 of which are entirely fictional. These railroads are ATSF, Conrail, Burlington Northern, Southern Pacific, Union Pacific, Missouri Pacific, EMD Leasing, and Missouri Kansas Texas, or MKT. The fictional railroads are known as BNLC, obviously, SM and SFNH, SST, MRW, LCTR, OCR, and MB. M MTNI, WSNR, and TL TNLW, and SORCOR. In this documentary, we will explore all of these different railroads as they range from Class 1 down to Class 3. This railroad is not only the largest to serve in Louisiana, but it is also the line to serve the most railroads in a single main line with dozens of other branches. We will start with the largest of the fleet and work, and work our way down to the shortest line in the shared system. Let's have a look at the Beaumont Lake Charles Horse Thief Subdivision, The Way of the Horse. Now, it's a warm morning in the winter of 1994. We're at BNLC's horse, horse Thief Yard at 6.21 a.m. The yard today is plentiful of action this morning. Our train today is number 1WBG. It is a unit train consisting of over 50 boxcars and a caboose at the rear. After our train departs, ATSF train 2WVS will be departing. After that, ATSF Train 3 EBS will depart. Next, MKT Train 4 EBS will be will depart after. Then finally, LCTR Train Number 5 WBS will depart. In the back, there is a B BNLC GP8 yard switcher number 247, currently waiting for its currently waiting for its crew to switch a recently restored 080 steam locomotive number 632 into a corner yard over there to wait for a future assignment for today. We will follow train 1WBG. The WB signifies it will go westbound all the way to Jeribaldi Yard, and that's what the G stands for. Our train will get started up in just a few moments.
And with that, yard work is complete. So, our train departed Horse Thief Yard a little over three hours ago, and due to the fourth trailing locomotive, General Electric U30C number 66, having issues with its traction motors due to it being involved in a fire 15 years ago in 1979. Again, all fictional, all fictional events. Our train wasn't able to proceed for the next two and a half hours due to constant failures and small fixes that don't, that to that to that locomotive's traction motors but we if we were officially on the move about 30 minutes ago due to the yard limit being 15 miles per hour we were still going relatively slow but here we are rounding the bends through the horse thief mountains up ahead is our first up ahead is our first crossing watch the train slowly chug its way to 45 miles per hour as it clugs past the crossing Here we are passing through Middletown, which has a railway in itself. You can probably notice the railroad crossings in the background. Middletown runs the railway called the MIPR, or the Middletown Industrial Park Railway. It only runs four individual locomotives, which are all EMD built GP38s, all of which have the number 01 to indicate that the railroad that they serve has a, de has a designation of 01. The locomotives are individually numbered 2078 to 2081, but they are not currently visible on the locomotives. The railroad began operation in Middletown in the beginning of 1974 and has been providing the small town with goods, with, with goods like oil, coal, logs, and steel. Here is one WBG flying past Argyle at 72 miles an hour. 
These locomotives were capable of speeds up to 75 miles per hour, but due to restrictions on the multiple multiple railroads they served on, they were not permitted to, to surpass 50 or 60 miles per hour, which is why in real life the Alco the Alcos that that uh, that are running this train right now don't really surpass like maybe 30 miles an hour in some of the railways they work on. Here is one WBG sl shortly switching onto a two-track main between Argyle and Bertram. It continues for about half a mile to the Bertram Highlands and into, and into Bertram.
Bertram, still fictional, is Louisiana's oldest town, founded in the year of 1814. The depot, which is shown here, is currently the state's oldest running depot, built in 1842. It started serving passenger service from 1882 to present day, and, it, and it's still hard to believe that it has been serving railroads for 122 years now. Although it has been slowly decreasing in ridership numbers, and the railroad wants it wants it converted into a freight depot sometime within the next 30 years, let's watch one WBG pass through Louisiana's oldest running depot. Now we're at Kyle Hill. Kyle Hill is the second steepest rail grade in Louisiana. Even with only 52 cars, these locomotives still gotta push hard in order not to roll down and become a runaway train. Listen to these old engines roar as they successfully accelerate to, to a good 35 miles per hour.
Due to Kao Summit being an extremely small village and due to its altitude, from here to Jaribaldi is what's going to be called a quiet zone. Quiet zones are towns or cities that trains do not have to sound their horn at while at a crossing. Unfortunately, we won't be able to hear the horn for probably the rest of this journey. Anyway, as this train passes, passes Kyle Summit, it continues for a quarter mile into the actual town called Kyle. About 15 minutes later, we pass through Summit Yard, BNLC's second busiest rail yard in their system. As we could see, a couple trains are preparing for their east and westbound trips. We can see a lot more railroads in use today at Summit than at Horse Thief, despite it being a much smaller yard.
Now traveling near La Quette, Louisiana, the railroad's most popular rail fan location, we travel up we travel up a much less steep grade, which is what leads the train to pass through La Quette. A lot of rail fans love this spot because of a very famous and tall bridge about a third of a mile ahead of the regional area. The limit for the regional area is about 25 to 30 miles per hour. This bridge is called the Laquette Historic Trestle, Trestle because it has been Louisiana's tallest railway trestle for over a century. It, it passes directly over Horse Thief Yard, which was where we were just a few hours ago. It makes it look like we've made a loop around the entire subdivision, which we will not do thankfully. The train slowly cruises over the bridge at a, at a device speed of a 30 mile of a 35 miles per hour. After this bridge, it climbs up Louisiana's number one steepest grade, the Luckett Garibaldi Grade. As you may be able to tell, this grade is kind of like the border between Luckett and Giribaldi, but before but before there's Giribaldi, there is this small little village called the Giribaldi Highlands with a pop with a rough population of about of about four hundred residents. Giribaldi is the town with the highest altitude in all of Louisiana. Let's watch the one WBG rapidly increase to seventy five miles per hour while struggling to get up the grade.
Here is one WVG slowing down to a track speed of roughly 25 miles per hour while slowly cruising past the highway while several rail fans eagerly stop their cars to watch or take a video of the train go by. About 15 minutes later, we start to slow down as we approach Jerry Baldy Yard. While our train arrives, let's see some yard action. Up first is an eastbound Mopac unit train with about 30 or 40 pipe cars, or might as well just call them flat cars with pipes. The train, sis the train symbol is 6EBG. Then, there is the light power move of roughly four different switcher locomotives all taking themselves to Summit with no cars at all. They are being sent to help with organizing cars at Summit, at Summit Yard. Their symbol is 7EBS. Here is a westbound heading to Svelterville's oil plant. It is led by an MT&I locomotive. It's an oil train which is also classified as a unit train. The symbol is 8WVSV. Then finally, this is what the train we will follow next. A short intermodal train that's headed to Summit. This will be an entirely a high speed highball run, considering it's going to headbound a few steep grades and that being that it's a load not as heavy as 1WBG's load. It will be started up in about 30 minutes. The, it's, it, the train symbol is 9EBS. And now, here is 1WBG finally pulling into Jerry Baldy Yard about 10 minutes late.
And with that, let's move on to our next journey. We're at Jerry Baldi Yard at about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Our next train is a TOFC intermodal train led by four of Santa Fe's Kodachrome paint scheme locomotives. Two are which built by EMD and the, and the other two built by General Electric. Their paint scheme was derived from the failed merger of S SPSF or Southern Pacific Santa Fe. They only kept this paint scheme for an extremely limited amount of time so these four locomotives are only wearing it for a few more months as they are scheduled to repaint it back into their war barn schemes. Our train here is train number 6 EBS. The EB in indicates that we're heading back eastbound. The S indicates that our destination is Summit Yard. We are scheduled to leave at around 1.30 p.m. Thankfully, we are proceeding with no issues. Right now, we are cruising over what looks to be a cliffside. On the other side, there is a sunburst coal mine which is frequently operated by a few WSNR locomotives, three to be exact, but more on that later. We are going at a measly speed of 29 miles per hour. Now, we are approaching the Jerry Baldi Highlands regional area. We will go about the same speed until we reach the Loquette grade, until the rest of the route will entirely be this train, rarely moving at high speeds.
Jerry Baldy Highlands was the most popular station on the BNLC's passenger service back in the 1920s. What you see here is the old depot, which is no longer in use. The depot has been used from the mid 1920s all the way up until 1982 when ridership was so critically low that the BNLC had no choice but to close it completely. Since it's no longer in use, it is seen to rail fans as the golden spike of the horsey subdivision. Let's, let's watch train 6 EBS slowly pass the depot while slowly, while slowly accelerating to its max speed. Here we are again at the highway between Jerry Baldy and Horse Thief with yet some more rail fans capturing the four locomotives in their Kodachrome livery. Our train is quickly picking up the pace. Our current speed is around 30 to 40 miles per hour. Still retaining the same speed while going down the lock at grade somehow, still at 40 miles per hour. As soon as we hit the bottom, we should be hitting 75 miles per hour. Now finally at top speed, we cross Louisiana's tallest rail trestle. We have to majorly slow down as we pass through the regional area of Laquette for about a mile. Then as soon as we hit the bottom of the next grade, we start hauling really good. This is still a relatively short journey so we won't really do top, sp top full speed for a long amount of time because Summit Yard is within the next two miles.
At short last, we approach 7th Yard. All train will, our train will remain here temporarily until the locomotives get sent to another yard for another assignment. Until then, let's watch 6 EVS complete its journey. Now, until the next mainline train is prepared, let's take a look at some of the smaller railroads that are in the classes 1 and 2 category. Now, we are revisiting the Middletown Industrial Park Railway. This railway only runs four individual locomotives, which are all EMD built GP38s all of which have the number 01 to indicate that the road they serve has a designation of all one. The numbers, the numbers on the locomotives are individually 2078 to 2081, but they are not currently visible. The railroad began operation in Middletown in the beginning of 1974 and has been providing the small town with goods like oil, coal, stone, logs, and steel. As you may be able to notice, the tracks are not really that maintained very well due to them not changing the tracks within their 20 years of operation so far. Today, a mainline train is delivering more products for the small industrial town railway. Locomotives 20, 2078 to 2081 are lined up on a switch directly outside to the uh, directly outside the main line to start helping with the switching. Uh, not all the cars here are being taken from the mainline train. Today, there will be specific there will be there has been a specific order placed for stone plates oil and aggregates or brock let's watch these locomotives slowly switch these cars into their rifle places
As the first order of rock comes in, Locomotive 2079 helps out 2078 in terms of switching them into their spurs of track. Being that it's a 7 car load, 2078 can't handle, well, 2078 can't switch without having a second locomotive taking half its load and putting that load in its correct place. Twenty seventy nine then drops its load off at the spur track parallel to its mineral industry. Here is 2078 street running for a short distance. After it makes its next turn, it drops off its load at, at parks at another yard for the rest of the day. Next up, 2079 also contributes more and takes its four car load of aggregate rocks to drop off at a separate mineral industry on the railroad.
We return to Jerry Baldi once again with probably the number one shortest railroad that operates on the horse thief called the SCPR or Sunburst Coal Plant Railroad. It runs an extremely short distance of around a mile total from Jerry Baldi Yard to the Sunburst Power Plant, literally right next to it. This railroad delivers coal to the power plant to provide electricity to the actual town of Jerry Baldi. It runs three locomotives, which are classified as EMD built SC40-2s. The railroad currently does not have any, any paint schemes yet, so even though it's been operating for almost 50 years, starting operation in 1946. So, until they get a paint scheme, they have been using three of WSNR's locomotives. WSNR is just known as the Western Railroad Division, but more on that later. These locomotives are numbered 211 to 213. They use coal trains that, that can link up to, up to up to 40 cars, but this train in particular with the designation of Train 1E, or eastbound, is running all three locomotives with 34 cars. Let's watch this, this extremely short railroad power the big town of Jerry Baldy with, with just 32 cars of coal. The speed limit is 30 miles per hour from Jerry Baldi to the coal plant, but inside the coal plant, trains have to remain under 15 miles per hour at all costs.
With these specific cars, coal is unloaded through hatches at the bottom called rotary dumps. Unloading usually takes 10 to 15 seconds on average per car. So with a 34 car train, this can take roughly 8 to 9 minutes to fully unload. You are probably wondering, well how does coal produce electricity? To put it simply, coal plants produce electricity by burning coal in a boiler to produce steam. The steam then is produced through tremendous pressure and then flows into a turbine which spins a generator to create electricity. When these locomotives are done with this operation, they will sit in Jari Baldi Yard or be shipped back to the WSNR. This, at the SCPR usually uses these locomotives on a daily basis, but gives them back to WSNR when they're, once their operations are complete, which takes usually an hour on, on most of their busiest days. When they're complete with their cars, usually they leave them in Jari Baldi Yard on, on any track for another train to take.
After 2 and 11 and 2.13 drop off their coal cars, they head back to their home yard on the WSNR Railroad. And with that complete, let's visit our next and final short line. Now we are revisiting Summit Yard. Today our train is a Sorcor local. Sorcor is often referred to as the Rockford route. Our train is being held by, well, our, our train is being led by two BNLC Alco locomotives along with one Sorcor Alco. The two BNLC locomotives are, are leading the train as Sorcor technically operates their, their trains under BNLC's recent ownership. They bought Sorcor at, at the end of 1992. Today our train is as designated as BLD, BLE-4. The, BL, the B indicates that we're heading to the Bertram Industrial Site. The L signifies that we have a local train, and the E, of course, means eastbound. Let's follow our train on its journey to the to the Bertram Industrial Site.
The Bertram Industrial Site also has a tiny little suburban village section of it with an extremely low population of roughly 35 residents. The train is switching its 12 car consist into the uh, into the industries that the cars are needed for pipe, stone, metal, coal and cargo. While doing this, it travels on probably the state's worst maintained track, as you can probably tell already.
The three locomotives then were in light, meeting with no cars, back to Summit Yard to park there for the rest of the day.
And that, my friends, is the wonderful subdivision of the BNLC, the Horse Thief Subdivision, The Way of the Horse. Even though we only covered 5 of the 18 railroads on the subdivision so far, you can expect the remaining 13 railroads to be in the next two parts of this adventure. Hopefully you guys will s hopefully you guys can understand. In this adventure, we we uncovered the ATSF, BNLC, WSNR, MITR and Sorcor. Please tell me what railroads I should uncover next on the next adventure beyond Jerry Baldi. Thank you guys so much again with with sticking with us. It took me literally a week to put this together so I would really appreciate it if you guys would like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also an extremely special thanks to Sneaky Steve God and his development team crew slash crew as they are the ones who made this entire game happen. Thank you again for, sp for sticking with me and stick with us for when we uncover the journey beyond Jerry Baldi covering the rest of the subdivision. Until then, see you soon. Thank you.